Our next speaker is Tomasz Zawuski, who is an art historian and philosopher. He is assistant professor at the Department of Media and Audiovisual Culture at the University of Łódź and at the Department of Art History and Art Theory at the Władysław Strzemiński Academy of uh, Fine Arts in Łódź. So he has a lot of jobs. Um, his research interest includes modern and contemporary art, social, political, and economic contexts um, of artistic culture, artistic activism, and self-organization, documentation, and artistic archives. He's the author of the book uh, uh, Modernizm Artystyczny i Powtórzenie, um, The Artistic uh, Modernism and Repetition, An Attempt at um, Reinterpretation, and the editor of the volume Arts in Transmedial Space. Uh, he's edited actually a vast number of volumes. Also, The um, Effectiveness of Art, um, Socialist Realisms and um, Modernizations, which I recently um, received and is a completely incredible resource. Um, the video um, in the visual arts um, and um, uh, Galeria Wschodnia, so um, the Eastern Gallery. Um, it's a collection of documents from uh, the years 1984 um, to 2017. And he's also the editor of the um, journals Art and Documentation and um, Hybris, the online philosophical magazine. Welcome. Thank you, Clara. Can you hear me properly? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me to the uh, important conference, and I think I can start. Uh, Pracownia działań dokumentacji i upowszechniania, in Polish acronym uh, PDDU, in English translation, Studio of Activities, Documentation and Propagation, was an altered private alternative artistic gallery formed and run by Przemysław Kwiek and Zofia Kulik, who lived and worked together as the Kwiekulik duo in the 1970s and 1980s in socialist Poland. Uh, PDDU became, and today is widely known as, an exercise in artistic self-organization, self-documentation, and self-historicization, an unofficial archive operating beyond established institutional systems. However, what the artists really wanted to create was a formalized art and research agency which would work under the auspices, or be part of, a state institution. Therefore, I would like to focus not so much on the actual activity of PDDU as one of altered unofficial or semi-official neo-avant-garde galleries, but on the project, program, and potential of PDDU as a state-financed performative archive within an official institution. My, my paper is not an exercise in counterfactual uh, history, but rather it in uh, what I'm tempted to call a potential history a history of what actually happened, but only in the form of a potentiality. In addition, going beyond the highly indeterminate uh, opposition of official versus unofficial, I will try to interpret the generative concept of PDDU in terms of the alternative official. This term is meant not only to show the embeddedness or even active participation of experimental art in the mechanisms of official art system under real or actually existing socialism, but also, and more generally, to make yet another step in the ongoing process of shifting the historiography of East European art of that period from the more or less implicit paradigm of dissident art towards the interpretative framework of socialist modernizations, complex and ambivalent as they are. Accordingly, I will argue that, that behind the concept of PDDU was an attempt to create a modernized institution of art production and propagation aimed at social and cultural modernization, and that such an attempt needs to be analyzed not only within the context of new artistic tendencies of the 1960s and 70s, but also in relation to structural changes of the official state art system in People's Republic of Poland and the state policies of cultural propagation. A drive for institu institutionalization. Uh, Kwiekulik started to pursue the idea of institu institutionalization uh, ephemeral art production, documentation, and propagation at the beginning of the 1970s. Between 1971 and 1973, they were trying to carve out their own space at the different institutions. 
They made efforts to get employed at the Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw and established there an interdepartmental studio which was to invent new ways of organizing student work and cooperation and therefore set the directions for reforming and modernizing higher art education. Together with Jan Stanisław Wojciechowski and Paweł Kwiek, they also made a proposal to the state TV in Warsaw. They wanted to create a studio which would video document ephemeral artistic activities across the whole country, build an archive of such materials to be used in various uh, TV programs, and develop unconventional methods of editing documentary footage with TV equipment. Both the academy and the TV studios were conceived of as experimental laboratories aimed at producing new practical knowledge and expertise. Due to this, um, uh, the distribution of documentation and theoretical accounts of their activities in the form of presentations, projections, screenings, periodicals, and books was also envisioned. However, in social terms, the most radical project was to use a gallery space, a part of the Sigma Club uh, at the uh, University of Warsaw, as an, and this is a quote, experimental center for developing methods and forms of creative activities in the youth milieus, or in another version, experimental station for propagating art. It was to be established under the auspices of the Union of Polish Students, which would provide the funding. Together with Jan Stanisław Wojciechowski, Viktor Gut, and Waldemar Raniszewski, uh, Kwiekulik imagined an art research and social education center which would reform the very praxis of inst institutional art production and propagation. Evoking the idea of the scientific technical revolution and new methods of work organization, they boldly claimed their right to revise, and I quote, all existing forms and arrangements in the sphere of culture and art, end of quote, and opted for modernization of institutions which propagate artistic culture. The imagined experimental center or station was to invent and develop alternative models of institutional practice to be implemented elsewhere. The models would not only be inferred from process-based artistic activities and therefore better adjusted to their specificity, but they were also to be more effective in terms of audience engagement than traditional methods of cultural propagation. The main forms of art propagation were to be direct personal contacts with artists, from dialects with them to the possibility of participation in their creative activities. Such an approach involved an extended anthropological and sociological concept of art. The activities would be thematically linked to current social affairs and would generally focus on the question of human personality and the possibility of one's self-realization within uh, existing conditions. This would entail uh, using uh, existing forms of human relationships and creating new ones as elements of uh, artistic activities, the participants of which would be, and this is a quote, revealing themselves thanks to their being in common with one another, end of quote. Kwikulik planned to make trips to different locations across the country, enter various professional, social, and class groups, perform artistic activities themselves, as well as participate in uh, other artists' actions. And finally, make and present documentation of all workings taking place under the auspices of their center or station. The, the, the documentation was to be used in further art production and propagation activities, and therefore it would form a performative self-extending archive. Second part, loops. When none of these projects met with approval and could be implemented, Kwiekulik turned to other options. During the, following, uh, during the following years, they created three projects of PDDU as an official institutional agency. Two of them were prepared in 1974 and the third one in 1977. The earlier two were based on experiences which Kwiekulik had been gathering in their actual performative and archival practice since the, since the end of the 60s. They were more audience-oriented and they treated art as an experiment in social and cultural modernization, which was in line not only with the avant-garde idea of art as a medium of social change, but also with uh, official policies of culture propagation as a means of social advancement. The third project, reflecting the shift that had taken place in Kwiekulik, uh, Kwiekulik's practice after 1974, focused entirely on artistic and art institutional issues. 
1972, uh, the Fund for Visual Arts Development was established as a program meant to provide state patronage and financial support for projects in the field of artistic culture. It was a means of developing and modernizing the state art system in Poland and was to introduce certain decentralization in funding and decision making, but also give more control over the system to the Union of Polish Visual Artists. In 1974, the board of the fund, which was dominated by prominent members of the union, announced its first call for applications. The fund was supposed to provide conditions for facili facilitating artistic creation and help cultural and social education institutions with propagating art. It could also commission research work and creation of programs on art propagation from institutions and individuals. A promoted form of propagating, in fact the only one available for grassroots artistic initiatives, was the establishment of an art gallery. In March uh, 1974, Kwiekulik applied to the board of the fund with their proposal of taking up research uh, on the theory and praxis of all types of documented activities, particip participatory and non-participatory. They wanted to be given a freer funding for, and this is a quotation, performing necessary experiments and their analysis, end of quote. They also undertook to prepare annual presentations as a form of reporting on the development of the project. Its final product would be a two-volume book in Polish and English, Sztuka Działań, The Art of Activities. Volume one would feature texts and volume two images. A rough draft listed the following issues to be included in the book, and I quote, one, activity as an exposed creative process, number two, types of activities, three, techniques of registration or documentation of activities, number four, impact of activities on different social groups, number five, history of the art of activities movement in Poland, number six, index of names of artists uh, doing activities, and number seven, list of uh, activities realized until now, end of quote. In order to complete such an ambitious art and research task, Kwiekulik needed an institutional uh, supply base. They proposed, as a temporary measure, to give this base the form of an official authored gallery. Such a gallery was to support and, in, and this is a quotation, integrate artists who perform activities by giving them access to accommodation facilities and technical resources, as well as to an archive with documentation materials and a library they could all use together, end of quote. Activities conducted by invited artists would be documented by Kwiekulik and later used to prepare edited narrative projections and screenings for four di different uh, types of audiences. Political, cultural and educational activists, scientists, school pupils and university students, and finally artists and art historians. The gallery would also document the workings of other art centers and spread the information about the development of process-based art activ activities across the country and also abroad. Finally, the, uh, it would share its experience and expertise with the Union of Polish Visual Artists and art high schools in Poland, advising them on the specificity of performing and documenting the art of activities. Since the altered gallery format was only a temporary measure, it was soon, after an in initial development stage of three years, to be transformed in a department or section of a state institution. Another version of the same project was submitted to the Institute of Art of the Polish Academy of Sciences. It was a complete scheme of work of PDDU as a new department at the e Institute. It involves performing activities, documenting them, editing, and finally, showing the edited documentation to the four above mentioned types of audiences plus workers. Um, all on conducted uh, activities were to be experiments in developing new types of artistic activities and their documentation, as well as testing the possibilities of artistic cooperation and audience involvement. Uh, all new types of activities were to be analyzed, elaborated on, and prepared for large-scale institutional implementation. This research-oriented aspect of the whole project was also stressed by the fact that the scheme took on the form of an algorithm and was presented as a flowchart. Drawing inspirations from the scientific technical revolution, Kwiekulik used here models provided by praxeology and cybernetics. The algorithm not only formalized the artist's activities, but also gave them the form of a loop 
or more precisely, cybernetic-like feedback loop. Public shows of edited documentation could themselves be a form of public activities and would involve audience participation. As such, they could become new artistic experiments, in which case they would entail new ways of documenting, produce new documentary materials to be edited and shown in public, and so on. So it was here that the logic of performative archive found its most ex explicit uh, expression. In terms of further propagation of the research, Fikulik wanted to publish the above-mentioned two-volume bilingual book, have the, uh, their archival photographic documentation printed in the form of exhibition displays, and organize several audiovisual performances based on edited archival uh, documentation. They planned also to create the scripts of these performances, as well as copies of audiovisual elements and material pro props used in them, so that they could be reenacted by other people. Despite evaluations of the project, uh, which were largely positive, Kwiekulik did not manage to get the state funding in 1974. They kept on trying uh, until 1977, when, when they reapplied to the Institute of Art with a modified uh, concept of PDDU. This time, they concentrated on the most pressing artistic and institutional issues, foregoing the question of social participation. They wanted to get funding for the next three years, during which they were supposed to work through and organize the archive they had been building since the late uh, 1960s, as well as document current artistic activities. The duo planned to use their flat, which served as the actual PDDU premises, and in a typically ambitious, or I would say over-ambitious fashion, prepared the, during three years, a third individual and 16 group meetings of artists who worked in the field of process-based activities, six thematic exhibitions and uh, uh, 28 audiovisual shows which were to propagate the movement of the art of activities. They also wanted to publish in Polish and English three brochures uh, with written documentary and the theory of the art of activities, a catalog of the above mentioned exhibitions and shows, and a summary of the whole project with proposals on how ephemeral art should be methodically documented. These modernizing proposals were to be implemented by art institutions. Unfortunately, the artists did not manage to obtain funding again. The same thing happened yet another time at the beginning of the 1980s when they were applying in vain to, different, uh, uh, to several different state institutions in Warsaw with a reduced version of the last PDDU project. Given this, the notion of loops, which I have used as the title of this chapter of my paper, refers not only to the cybernetic-like feedback structure of PDDU archive, but also to Kwiekulik's going in circles while wrestling with bureaucracy and conflicting interests of different agents within uh, the state art system. Yes. Uh, competing modernizations. Uh, why Kwiekulik did not succeed in their efforts to uh, establish PDDU as an alternative yet official state-financed institution which was to develop models of modernizing artistic, social and institutional practice? The reasons were complex and overdetermined, but we might risk one answer here. In the 1970s, the Polish state art system, in line with the watchword of the communist government policy, was generally directed towards social and institutional modernization. Within it, there were several projects similar to Kwiekulik's, and the main agents, namely the Ministry of Culture and Art and the Union of Polish Visual Artists, had their own conflicting interest in establishing and controlling an institution responsible for art documentation and information. Uh, in 1974, during the 14th Congress of the Union in Lublin, the delegates um, demanded that the ministry should establish, and I quote, a national center for documentation and information of contemporary visual, actually plastic arts, end of quote. Next year, at the fifth session of the artistic board of the Union, where several uh, projects of such uh, centers were presented, a representative of the ministry clearly stated that there were no plans to create such a national center until the end of the decade. At the same time, she did not rule out a possibility of funding smaller projects of that, of that kind. But even though in the following years the union were trying to establish such a small documentation center as part of different institutions, the same way as Kwiekulik, they also failed. 
Finally, um, at the turn of the 70s and the 80s, the ministry made its own effort to create a, a, a center uh, which would be devoted to both exhibiting contemporary art and documenting it. It was formally established under the name of the Center for um, Contemporary Art Ujazdowski Castle in 1981, but it did not really start to organize exhibitions until the late 1980s. On the other hand, uh, already in 1985, a section of the institution started to operate, which was called the Center for Information and Documentation of Contemporary Art. Later, in 1997, it was renamed as the Center for Scientific Information and Documentation. Nevertheless, it acted as a regular documentation collection, a far cry from the performative archive imagined by Kwikuli. And now, conclusion. Uh, institutional uh, historicization of Kwikulik's archive. After 1990, when the Center for Contemporary Art Ujazdowski Castle, uh, under the directorship of Wojciech Krukowski, got more receptive to the neo avant garde milieu, several attempts were made to involve the institution into preserving, working on, ordering, and presenting uh, Kwikulik's archive, but they were mostly unsuccessful. In 1991, the center did buy a small number of documentary photographs from the artists, but in 1997, a huge retrospective exhibition of their works and archive was called off due to the institution's budget cuts. And in uh, 2002, a project of digitizing and uh, historicizing the archive under the auspices of the center was dropped before it really started. A few years later, a similar project was taken up with uh, active participation of a few institutional subjects, including the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, which invested its financial, infrastructural, and human capitals into the presentation of the archive in the form of the monumental book Kwiekulik, Zofia Kulik and Przemysław Kwiek, published in 2012. The museum also bought Kwiekulik's archive itself. Its items will be placed in the new building of the uh, museum, which is currently under construction, as you can see. This is a still from live streaming you can watch whenever you want and see the progress. Um, uh, so uh, the items of the archive will be placed in the new building of the museum, which is currently under construction, and they will be presented there in a separate room as a permanent exhibition installation authored by Zofia Kulik. The museum is also planning to make the digitized, uh, digitized uh, versions of all archival items available online. But even as part of the museum collection, the archive will regain some of its active and generative potential. Kulik and Kwiek will, be, uh, will keep the right to use the digital copies of all the archival items in order to make, under the name of Kwiek Kulik, new prints of documentary photographs or digital reconstructions of historical slide projections, as well as include the items into their respective current artistic production. And let me finish with this slide. And these are some uh, archival uh, items I was able to locate in Kwikulik's archive, and they are testimonies to the contact and link between Artpool in 1979 and, and uh, uh, Kwikulik uh, duo and also archive. So have a look at them, and thank you uh, very much for your attention. They are an, an homage, I would say, from Kwikulik, uh, Kwikulik's archive to, to, to the Artpool archive. Thank you very much.